Hey, good morning. How y'all doing? It is Monday morning, the 14th of March, and things are a little bit different today from what you're used to. Uh, I don't know why, but um, I think the Lord prompted me to do something a little bit different, so uh, I hope that's okay with y'all. Um, I do want to discuss the spiritual gift of signs and wonders. Like I said, this will be a little bit different today from what you're used to, and I'm not sure who needs to hear this, but here it goes. In Acts chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, it says, Now it happened in Iconium, that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews, and so spoke that a great multitude, both Jews and Greeks, believed. So that's good news, right? The Jews and the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. In other words, the apostles were doing signs and wonders. Notice here that it said the unbelieving Jews were stirring up the Gentiles and poisoning their minds. Before I, want, before I go any further, I want to say that there are many people who do the same thing today when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit. They, they have a phrase for them, and they're called cessationist. They believe that signs and wonders ceased or stopped with the apostles. They have almost no biblical foundation for their beliefs. The verses that some of them try to use are 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 10, which says, Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. The Greek word translated perfect is teleos. T-E-L-E-I-O-S, teleos, which according to Strong's means of full age, man, and perfect. These people believe that what was perfect meant the canon, the, the canon of scripture, meaning what books we have in our Bibles today. I believe that God's word is perfect. But I question when the perfection of the canon actually occurred. In other words, what books should or should not have been included. Without going into a separate teaching on what books should have been included in our Bible or what should, what should not have been included, I will say that there have been differences of opinions on what books have been or should have been included as canon. Even Martin Luther disputed some of the books that we have in our Bibles today. Most people agree that, uh, you know, we have 66 books in our Bible today, but Catholics have 13 more books called the Apocrypha, containing such books as 1st and 2nd Maccabees. Other people argue over books of the Pseudepigrapha, such as the Book of Enoch and the Gospel of Thomas, saying that they should be included. Even books which we have in our New Testament now, such as Hebrews, James, 2nd and 3rd John, 2nd Peter, Jude, and Revelation, have been disputed by some people throughout the years, 
as not belonging in our canon of Scripture. Some people believe you shouldn't even read from them in a church setting. So these are all arguments against the canon of Scripture or the collection of books being in full or being perfect. Now let me repeat myself. I'm not saying that God's Word is not perfect. I am saying that we don't know for sure if the canon or the collection of Scripture that we have now is perfect or complete. Then again, relating to the verse that we read in 1 Corinthians 13.10 that says, But when that which is perfect has come. In the Greek, the phrase that which is from the Greek word ha. It's spelled H-O, but it's pronounced ha. And that can mean the, this, that, one, he, she, it, etc. In other words, it could have easily been translated that when he, which is perfect, has come. It makes more sense to me when I read this verse, knowing what I know, that when that which is perfect has come, it relates to Jesus' return. He is the only perfect one that I know. We know that Jesus is perfect because he never sinned. As a matter of fact, if he didn't take on, our, on all of our sins on himself at the cross, he couldn't, he couldn't have entered hell and taken captivity captive. So I believe that signs and wonders are still for today. You will find a lot of cessationists that disagree. If you look on the internet, you will find all kinds of people that say, signs and wonders aren't for today. You shouldn't have words of wisdom, word of knowledge, blah, blah, blah. But I serve Jesus Christ, who according to Hebrews 13 verse 8, is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe that the Holy Spirit can still do signs and wonders to and through His people. I spent the last two months showing that God can still give spiritual gifts, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, tongues and interpretation and on and on they are given by the spirit for the profit of all it says in first corinthians 12 there is no way to get me to believe that something was put in the bible just so we can read about it and say i wish i wish that would happen today god's word is as relevant today as it was when it was written I believe that we can do what it says we can do and be who it says we can be. If the word says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover, I believe it. If the word says, raise the dead, I believe it. I believe what the word says. Amen? Well, that wraps it up for today. Like I said, today is going, it's, it's a little different. And I believe it's the Holy Spirit prompting me to, to give this particular teaching in this way. So uh, hopefully y'all can learn something from it. You may or may have your you may have your own opinions on it. That's okay. I mean we can be we can agree to disagree as they say. Uh, be sure if you hadn't subscribed already to click on the red subscribe button. And uh, feel free to share these videos with your friend and your family anytime on YouTube or on Facebook. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are still doing signs and wonders today. Lord God, we thank you that even though we can have disagreements, Lord God, we know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
And Father God, we just ask that you would just help us to understand you, help us to understand your word. And Father God, let the Holy Spirit speak to us and teach us in all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope y'all have a great day today and look forward to having you back tomorrow. Thank mm-hmm. you.